The second letter of John is written to some churches to encourage them and to um, point out some key marks of a believer. Um, our key principle for this book is the marks of a surrendered follower of Jesus are evident. You will know them by their fruits. Um, the point of the letter is to show that a walk with God um, will separate the wolves from the sheep. There are specific things that a believer will exhibit in their walk, um, such as truth and love and surrender. Believers have their lives based on truth and their decisions based on love and their interactions with others based on love. And truth is the basis of love. We have the entire word of God that is truth and it talks a lot. This key point is love and God loved us and we are to love others. Second John. The elder to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, for the sake of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we have received commandment to do from the Father. Now I ask you, lady, not as though I were writing to you a new commandment, but the, the one which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another and this love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourself, that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house, and do not give him a greeting. For the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. Though I have many things to write to you, I do not want to do so with paper and ink, but I hope to come to you and speak face to face, so that your joy may be made full. The children of your chosen sister greet you. A surrendered life with Christ is not just in the heart or in the mind, but it's in your actions and your deeds. That's our first sub-principle of this book. John writes that he could see the people were acting. In verse 4, it says, I, am, I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we have received commandment to do from the Father. They weren't talk, just talking Christianity, they were actually living it. And that's what we're called to do today. We're called to take the word and apply it to our lives and not just claim a vague belief. Um, our second sub-principle is truth is the basis of love and love is defined by the truth. God is the truth. Verse, said, verse 6 says they ought to walk according to the commandment that they have heard from the beginning and that's to love one another. This was written to Gentiles so they didn't necessarily know the Old Testament but from the beginning of Jesus' ministry he talked constantly about loving each other and loving others and loving the Father and that all these things were based on Christ's love for us and Christ's love for the church and for the world. In the New Testament Jesus talks about how the world will know us by how we live, by our love for each other and this comes out very evidently in our lives today. Many times personally I've had people come up to me and ask me why I act a certain way or why the church that I go to is a certain way, why they interact with each other so lovingly and brotherly. And it's just a mark of a believer and Christ, Christ said it and he, he pointed out that we will be set apart and persecution will come for it, but that there is joy in living the life of a believer in Jesus because we have a fellowship of brotherhood, sisterhood, and mentorship, and all these things, discipleship together. The church is a family, and Jesus talked about that, and that's how God designed it, as a family. Our third sub-principle is in verse 9, and it's, you can't talk the talk without walking the walk. 
verse 9 says, Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. So again, we come to the point where a walk with Christ is a walk with Christ. It's not a sit standstill. It's not a uh, waiting around for Christ to come back or waiting around to die. But we're, we're called to do things. We're called to follow the commandments of the Bible, follow the things that Jesus said, and to live according to them. Christianity is not lived out in our words, but in our actions and in truth. And when we base our lives on the truth, surrender our lives to Christ and our actions will follow true true walk as a believer our actions will follow and go with how Christ would have us live